A paragraph is a group of related sentences. Why do we use paragraphs? Firstly, it makes your writing more appealing to read. Look at this piece of writing about the Amur leopard. Because it's presented as a block of text, it doesn't make me really want to read it. Here's the same piece of work that is now presented in paragraphs. I don't think there is any doubt which you'd prefer to read. A second reason for using paragraphs is that it allows your reader to skim and scan through the information quicker. Remember, with information text, the reader sometimes doesn't read from the beginning to the end. There are different ways of indicating that you are beginning a new paragraph. Leaving a small space at the start of the line is one technique. This is called indenting. To do this when typing your work, simply press the tab button. Alternatively, instead of indenting, you can skip a line in between paragraphs. This can be done by pressing the enter button twice on your keyboard. Finally, using a subheading is also a sensible approach. This not only demarcates paragraphs, but helps readers to skim and scan your writing. With story writing, there is a clear set of rules you can follow to help you know when to start a new paragraph. If you haven't done so already, watch the Using Paragraphs When Writing Stories video I have produced. When writing stories, the decision to change paragraphs is often made as the story is being written. However, with information writing, decisions on how you're going to lay out your work is often made before you begin writing. If you plan well, you will paragraph well. The first paragraph of most information texts explains to the reader what they are going to learn from reading what you have written. We call this the introduction. At this point, the reader will be asking themselves, what's in it for me? And they will decide whether it's worth continuing to read. Your introduction should hook them. The final paragraph of most information texts usually summarizes what has been written and reinforces the main idea. It may also serve as a call to action for the reader, which is basically suggesting what the reader should do now, having heard what you have just said. We call this final paragraph the conclusion. A good way to think about the introduction and conclusion is that they are the two pieces of bread that keep the sandwich together. Explanation texts. This type of writing explains how something works or why something happens. Examples include the life cycle of a plant, how bees make honey, the digestion process, how humans can get to Mars. When planning, break down your explanation into steps. Here, I've used four steps. Too few steps or too many steps can make it confusing for your reader. When writing your explanation, begin and end with your introduction and conclusion. A paragraph will then be dedicated to each of the steps. So in this piece of writing, I will end up writing six paragraphs. Without paragraphs, it would be confusing to my readers as to when one step finished and another step began. Of course, the number of paragraphs I end up writing does depend on how many steps I have broken my explanation down to. Discussion texts. Discussion texts look at something from different points of view, often identifying the pros and cons of something. Example titles might be Are zoos good or bad? Electric cars are better than conventional cars. Social media has improved human communication. Mobile phones should be banned in schools. 
When planning, it's worth putting your points into a table with points for on one side and points against on the other. When writing your discussion, once again, we'll begin and end with the introduction and conclusion. One paragraph will then be dedicated to one side of the discussion, in this case, the points for, and one paragraph will be devoted to the other side, points against in this example. Overall, this piece of writing will have four paragraphs. Comparison texts. This is when you compare two things and discuss how they're different and how they are similar. For example, you could write a comparison between African elephants and Indian elephants. North Korea compared with South Korea. Baseball versus cricket. Or simply take two characters from a novel and compare them. A good way to plan a comparison text is to use a Venn diagram. This is better than a table because as well as noting how things are different to each other, it gives you space to show how they are similar. When writing a comparison, it can be broken down into five paragraphs. The usual introduction and conclusion sandwiches, then the other three paragraphs. One paragraph could explain how the first thing, A, is unique, another paragraph why B is unique, and finally, a paragraph that can be used to explain how they are similar. Recount texts. Recount text retell something that has happened. This is usually done in chronological order, which means in the order in which it happened. Examples of recount texts are our school trip, a match report for a football game, the life of Neil Armstrong, my holiday to Spain. A good way to plan a recount is along a timeline with events going from left to right in the order that they occurred. Group your information into manageable chunks. When writing a recount, once again, we'll begin and end with our introduction and conclusion. A paragraph will be given to each event on the timeline. It's important to ensure your paragraphs are written in chronological order. Report texts. Reports give your reader information about a topic. For example, you might be writing about the mountain gorilla, or basketball, the moon, the Olympics, or even a country such as Italy. When conducting your research for a report, it's a good idea to arrange it on a mind map, also known as a spider diagram. Each arm of the mind map will be about a separate subtopic and should answer a question that you're trying to answer. For example, if I was reporting on the giant panda, I might want to report on its appearance, habitat, diet, behavior, threats, and protection. The small outer arms is where you would write the information you've found out whilst researching. When presenting your work, we'll once again use an introduction and conclusion. The number of other paragraphs will depend on the number of subtopics we have researched. In this case, we have six questions I'll be answering. So in total, my writing will be organized into eight paragraphs. I would strongly recommend using a subheading when starting a new paragraph in report writing. So there you have it. Paragraphs make your writing easier to read. Unlike when story writing, with information texts, paragraphs are often determined during the planning stage of your writing. Signal your new paragraphs by skipping a line and by using subheadings. <laughs>